Today I'm going to show you how a shock absorber works in a coilover strut type suspension. Now this type of suspension has a shock absorber at the bottom here. Then inside here we have a dust boot, a bump stop, of course the coil, the spring seat, and then the strut mount at the top here which has a bearing. Now in order to get this spring off of the strut, I need to unbolt this top here but this spring is under tension. So I'm going to be using these spring compressors to compress the spring so I can take off the nut to release the tension. And now I can remove the strut mount and remove the spring from the strut itself. So here we have the spring and the shock absorber that make up the strut assembly. Now the spring is responsible for supporting the weight of the car as well as taking the majority of the impact during an initial bump. However, the spring has a tendency to rebound and keep bouncing as you go along the road. Now in order to control that and make sure that the wheel stays on the ground, we have the shock absorber that will help dampen out that springiness. So just a quick overview on how the shock absorber works. We have this piston here that moves inside of this cylinder that's encased in oil. The top of the piston is connected to the body of the car which is at the top of the strut mount and we have the body of it which is connected to the unsprung mass at the wheel with the steering knuckle. Now I know that this strut is blown and it doesn't have much oil left in it because when I push it down you can see it just stays there. It's supposed to rebound nice and smooth and come back up. So I'm going to open up this shock absorber to see what's inside and how it works to dampen the spring. So the strut has actually been laminated over here during manufacturing. I'm going to use my angle grinder and I'm going to open it up. Okay, and you can see that there's some oil that's dripping here. I'm just going to use my brother's underwear here and sap it up. And now I can remove this piston. You can see it's a long tube. You can see there's a little bit of oil left inside. Okay, and now I'm going to drain the piston itself. So this is the cartridge of the strut removed from the housing. You can see we've got pretty much just a long tube here inside which there is a piston. At the top here we have a nut that secures this valve so I'm going to remove that next. I'm just unscrew that nut. Alright so I gave the piston a little whack and all of these pieces are coming out here. Alright so these are all the pieces that came out here. You can see we've got these thin spring washers here and we've also got this thicker spring washer and then we've got this orifice here and these holes are what allow the oil to flow through. And we've got some more spring washers for the other side. And then of course you have the actual valve body itself, again with those same six holes. Now this sounds pretty cool, but up at the top of the piston here, we have another spring with a nut that's holding the end of the piston. I'm just going to jam it here through, and you can see we can remove the piston. Now if we take a closer look at the piston here, if you look closely you'll notice that there's actually another valve at the tip of the piston here. Now on the outside here you have this plastic seal. We've got a spring here to keep tension. Over here we have a stopper and that's to stop this piston from being pulled out this way under the pretension of the spring. Now on the outside here we have a reserve chamber for the oil and on the inside here we have the pressure tube where all the action happens. Now on the tip of the piston separating these two chambers we have a valve and then again another valve at the bottom here that separates the pressure tube from the reservoir. Now your strut suspension usually acts like a spring dampener mass system where we have the coil spring, we'll have the damper which is your shock absorber, and then we have the sprung mass which is the mass of the body of the vehicle that sits on top of the unsprung mass which is the wheel. Now when your wheel hits a bump, the spring will compress to take some of that impact. Now what's going to happen is the spring is going to want to release because it's storing that energy and it's going to cause the wheel to bounce and bounce and bounce as you go across the road. Now ideally you wouldn't want your wheel bouncing as you move across the road and that's why we have this damper here to take away some of that bounce. So if we take a look at how everything works here we have this piston that moves inside of this tube here back and forth with the movement of the suspension. Now this whole thing is encased in oil and we have one valve on the tip of the piston here and the base valve that's screwed to the bottom of this chamber. Now this chamber here actually sits inside of the strut housing very loosely and it just floats like that and that space and that gap inside of there actually forms part of the reserve chamber. So let's say the piston goes into complete compression, well what's going to happen is the oil from here is actually going to go through these little orifices holes and fill up the chamber on this side and some of that oil will actually go through the base valve over here and fill up the reserve chamber over here. Now what's interesting is that the speed of the shock absorber can actually be controlled by these orifice hole size here as well as the orientation of these spring washers. So for example if you wanted to control the piston movement in one direction the spring washers would be oriented to favor that direction to allow oil to flow more freely and then again in the opposite direction if it moves out it would actually restrict it from moving so that in that way you can actually control the compression or extension of the shock absorber separately 
by tuning these valves. Now if you graph the time versus displacement graph of your wheel when it hits a bump here at point one, in an under damp system, i.e. your shock absorber isn't working, it's going to cause this bounce here that you see in the red line. Now if your shock absorber is over damp, what's going to happen is it's going to take a little while, a delay, before it'll get back to its ideal position. And this blue line here represents it being critically damped, and that's where your wheel will come down as fast as possible without overshooting and bouncing. Now ideally, you wouldn't want it to be critically damped on your vehicle. You'd want it to be slightly under damped just to maintain a more comfortable ride. Now some OE strut manufacturers actually make their own aftermarket struts and the difference with those lies in the valving itself as well as the quality of the materials used in other components. Now if you do put aftermarket struts on your vehicle and immediately notice that the ride is much stiffer that's mostly due to the valving inside of here as well as the type of oil that is used and that's because the OE will tune their valving to work best with a brand new car whereas an aftermarket company will tune it to work with a much more worn out car or consolidate these valvings to work with a broader range of vehicles. Now one of the most common problems with shock absorbers or struts as they get old is that these seals will start to leak and the oil will come out and then it won't be able to hold any more pressure when you're going over bumps and your car starts bouncing on the road and you have to replace your shocks. Now when your shocks or struts are worn out your damping effect is no longer a part of the equation and the system becomes a mass spring system where your wheel is just bouncing along the road. Now since you have no more damper to absorb that impact, your tire itself is going to start absorbing that impact and you're going to notice along the circumference of your tire flat spots from that bouncing. And that's pretty much all the components that go into making your shock absorber work to keep your wheels on the road. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one.